Hey there, Timmy. Doing some legal research? Yes, sir. I'm trying to find information on competency requirements for Social Security, but I'm not having any luck. Have you considered using Social Security failure to follow treatment as your search term instead? Gosh, that works way better. Thanks a million, mister. But wait, Timmy. This situation must come up a lot. You have some terms, but you don't know if they are the same terms that other people have used. These terms work this time, but what about the next time? Gosh, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to keep on trying different search terms till I luck out. Uh, that's not entirely true, Timmy. Would you like to know about a tool that lets you know right away if the keywords you are using are correct? Gosh, yes, but does such a miraculous tool really exist? <laughs> it surely does, Timmy. These tools are called indexes, and you'll hardly ever find them online. I'm not so sure about all those prayer resources. My mama only says Grandpa uses him, them because he's older than Methuselah. Well, Timmy, your mother is right that there are lots of things that are better, easier, and faster to do online these days. A lot of your research can be done without ever leaving the computer, but there are times when a good old-fashioned print resource just can't be replaced. For example, let's talk about the search you were just running. I noticed you were using Google. Can you think of any reason Google might not work for your research? Gosh, no. Google has information on everything. <laughs> That's right, Timmy, it does. But that can actually be a bad thing. Instead of just searching sources that might be helpful to your specific problem, Google is searching sources on every subject imaginable. And not all of them are written by people you can trust, especially for legal information. Wouldn't it be nice to narrow down your search a little? I guess so, but don't I do that sometimes? I mean, like when I'm choosing a particular database to search on, but Westlaw or Lexis Classic? That you do, Timmy. Using a smaller database is a great idea because it is more likely to bring you back relevant results. But you can also do essentially the same thing by choosing a good print source. For example, since you are looking for information on Social Security, why not try a good treatise on the subject, like Social Security Law and Practice? You think that'll help? Golly, Mr. Condescending 50s narrator, I'm willing to go take a look. Gosh, mister, this sure is a big set. How do I know where to begin? Well, Timmy, where would you begin if this were any other book? The Table of Contents? Well, that's, that's a perfectly good place to start, Timmy. But there is an even better one, The Index. It's probably in the last volume of the set. Why don't you try looking up the keywords you were using to search Google earlier? Golly, here's my word, competency. All it says is incompetent and insane persons, this index. That's called a cross-reference, Timmy. It turns out that your search term wasn't the correct one, but unlike Google, if you choose the wrong search term, an index will often point you toward the correct terms. Let's go take a look at the term in the cross-reference. See? Here we have a list of helpful sections that discuss your topic. There's even another cross-reference if you don't find what you're looking for here either. In this case, it's generally mental disorders, this index. That's real keen, mister. This is even better than playing sick ball with the fellows. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, Timmy. Not only are you directed to helpful information, but you know that information comes from a source that is trusted by attorneys, judges, and other professionals. But why are these other things next to the last volume of the index? Like the table of laws and the table of cases. Those are for situations in which you already have a case or statute you know is important to your issue. Like for instance, I know that Preston v. Heckler 769 F2D 988 1985 Judge, Judge James Dixon Phillips made some important remarks about my issue. That's a perfect example, Timmy. Why don't you look up Preston v. Heckler in the table of cases? 
G. Willikers, here it is. Here's, there's the same section I already found, but here's a new one that looks really helpful. That's real neat, mister. Thanks for showing me how you use indexes and tables. I'm glad to help, Timmy. There is a lot you can do with print resources, particularly if you get stuck in one of your online researches. And remember, another thing that you can do if you get stuck is to talk to one of the friendly law librarians who are on staff to help you with your research. That's great, mister. I'll be sure to use indexes and tables from now on, and I won't be shy about asking the librarians for help. Gee, with all my research done, I have time for a cherry fizz before chores tonight. Well, then run along, you young scamp, and be sure to tell your friends about how helpful indexes can be. I surely will.